Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm back with another video for a blog named Hero. This is the birthday cards challenge. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at no line coloring, color layering stamp sets. Say that 10 times fast. Now this lion looks like he might be a little complicated, but he's totally not. And the sky is the limit for no line coloring on color layering stamp set. And we'll talk about that here more in a minute. Now I chose this guy. This is the Hero Arts, a brave lion color layering stamp set. This was from the June 2017 My Monthly Hero. This was an add-on. So this is still available in the shop and I will have this list down below as well as over on my blog if you're interested in this and I love this guy. I chose this because I was thinking August so the um, animal for August is a lion and I thought that this would be perfect for an August style birthday card. I do keep a part of the packaging when I get these color layering stamps keep them in the back of my pocket so I can reference them. And then I also write myself a little note on what colors Hero Arts recommends to use with them. I don't use them in the video today, but it's always nice to have that on hand. This is the Hero Arts Tribal Stripes, a bold background stamp, bold print background stamp. I'll show you how I use that here in just a moment. I really love this background stamp. The, the shape of it just makes me happy. But again, we'll talk about that here more in a minute. So I have a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock in my Misty stamping tool and I used a Hero Arts rectangle nesting infinity die to trim this down. Now the die that I chose to use was just big enough that my lion would fit in here and have enough white space so as I finished off my card it would balance better and you'll see that more as I finish this off. I wanted my lion to have a little bow here, so I need to stamp that first so it looks like he's it's sitting in front of the lion, so it actually look like it would be around the lion's neck and up front. So I have the first layer of my lion. This would be the largest stamp out of the three in the set. I have that on my panel. I have the bow placed on top of that, and then I have the sentiment underneath it just to give myself an idea of where all of my placement is going to be. I'm going to pick this up with the door of my Misty and I'm going to take off that first layer of the line as well as the sentiment and leave the bow. Now because this is going to be no line coloring you could use any colors you want. I wanted my bow to be green. I thought that would match the colors of my lion really well and the colors of my card base really well. So I chose a green. I am going to use the Hero Arts Soft Green. This doesn't need to be perfect, folks, because we are going to be coloring over the top of it. And I don't care if it's not perfectly stamped. Like the second layer here on the bow, it's not perfect. And in fact, I could have skipped it and just kind of drew in my own lines. I kind of end up doing that anyways, but it's not a big deal. It's on there. And as you can see, I'm like, nah, it's not, it's okay. But it's fine. We're going to move on. I did place some masking paper over the top of that. Now I can place the first layer of my lion back on my panel and start getting that stamped. This is Hero Art Soft Vanilla. Now this is going to be the only layer on the lion that I do double stamp. And I double stamp this because this soft vanilla is a really light ink, which is perfect for no line coloring. However, it is so light that I wouldn't be able to see how I could line up the other layers of my stamp. So, and I show you right here where I need to have the second layer of the lion lined up perfectly with that first one. Otherwise it's gonna be off and it's gonna make our job so much more difficult in order to color it later. I'm gonna stamp the second layer in soft brown ink. I chose all of these inks because they were light and soft and once I colored over the top of them, you'll never know that I had a dye ink underneath it. Now I have the third layer. I am going to use the Hero Arts Cup of Joe ink. This one is a little bit darker. It's not so dark that it's gonna interfere with any of my coloring, but it does give me a good base on where I want to start my coloring. I also stamped the sentiment in the Hero Arts Cup of Joe as well because I thought that would look great. You could heat emboss that if you would like. I'm just gonna go straight up with the Cup of Joe and call it a day. Now I'm gonna start coloring my lion. I was actually playing around with a few colors before I decided on what colors I wanted to use, and that's fine. The beauty of Copics is you can go over the top of them and you will never know that you had another color underneath it. So I'm starting with the E25. I do map out my shadows with this color. I end up deciding it's not quite as dark as I wanna go, so I do end up bringing in the E29. 
At this point, I'm literally tracing over the top of the lines that are already there. Once I get those in, I do start taking some creative license and I kind of start coloring in my own lines, kind of bringing colors out more towards the edge of that mane, making it look a little bit fuller, making it look like it has quite a bit more movement, uh, a little bit more dimension and depth to it. But to begin with, I'm just going to be a little conservative here, kind of give myself a plan, decide which direction I'm going to go so it doesn't get ruined. I'm going to show you this first color here in real time, and then I am going to speed this up. Now, overall, this card probably took, uh, I would say, probably about 45 minutes to put together. I did have about an hour worth of footage, but some of that time was spent me trying to find where some of my supplies are. Everything's still kind of a mess So from the move, so I'm still trying to look for everything. It didn't actually take that long. However, I did want to give you guys the opportunity to see some of this in real time. I know that you guys that follow me really love to see some of this real time footage, but I also need to be able to get it down into a more manageable video. So I'll show you this first one in real time and then I'm going to speed it up because really at the end of the day, after I really get down my first layer here, I just, after that, I just kind of go for the gold. There's no rhyme or reason to it really. But again, we'll talk about that here more in a minute. So no line coloring on color layering stamps. You could use anything you wanted any color layering stamp you wanted. There really is no limit to it other than your comfort zone. Now, that being said, I strongly recommend that you just pull out some color layering stamps and give it a shot. It's actually a lot easier than what you think because a lot of those uh, layers, a lot of those details are already done for you. You're just gonna go over the top of them with whatever colors you, you decide to go over the top of, uh, top of them with. This lion is a really good example because his mane, it's it's super easy. It's almost a no-brainer, but he has some detail in his face, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going in with my marker, and I'm literally tracing over the top of that detail, and I'll work at that detail until I get it where I want it so it doesn't look quite as flat as what the color layering stamp set itself would do. Now, I love the look of a color layering stamp when they're all stamped out. If you just stamp it out straight up with your, your inks, you're good to go. It looks amazing. However, being able to really kick it up a notch with your markers or even colored pencils, you could even do some color layering stamp sets would lend really well to watercolor. Anything folks, you just, the sky's the limit. The only thing that's holding you back is you. So now that I'm working on the details on his face, I'm just going in with a really, really light hand. I'm not going to overly commit to some of these areas because A, they're tiny and B, I know that I'm using a dark marker. So I'm trying to be careful to keep it pretty clean, keep my lines really thin. So as I work on this, I can bring those lines out more, kind of fatten them up, really add in that depth and dimension. And I'm also just kind of winging it. Like I'm not 100% committed yet to what color scheme I'm going to use or what color combination I'm going to use. So I'm just kind of going a little on the light handed side, give myself enough room here. And I also know that I don't need to completely finish this guy off with my Copics. I can bring in my colored pencils and at some point I do end up coming in with some Tri Plus fine liner pens. Those work out great to add in those tiny little details like this. Now that I have his face in his mane mapped out with that E25, I decided that I need to make it just a little bit darker. So I'm bringing in the E29. I'm also going to speed it up from here on out, folks, because really I'm just going to repeat the same thing I had done with that E25 with all of my colors. I also started with my darkest color on this because it's the most important. If you don't have that dark color around his face, it's not going to look right. So I needed to be able to map it out with my darkest color and give myself that direction. Now, I, it, on one hand, I am winging it. 
I'm just kind of going with it. Whatever shape strikes my fancy, that's what I'm doing. But on the other hand, I still need to make sure that I'm main maintaining the shape of this line. He still needs to look like a lion when I'm done. So starting with my darkest color gave me a really good foundation to do that. Now that I hit, am done with my E29, and now I'm gonna bring back that E25, and I'm gonna start stretching those lines out away from his face a little bit more. Now that mid-tone, that soft brown that I had stamped on here, that's where my E25 is gonna go, but it's also gonna be where my E23 is. So I'm not adding as much E25 as I could, so I'm not completely going over all of that soft brown with the E25, but I am gonna bring it out a little bit more, and then I'll bring in my E23 three fill that in a little bit more and move on from there so I want the E25 to kind of stretch out towards the ends of this as well. Now, when it's stamped, it doesn't quite do that in all the areas. So here's at the point where I'm kind of taking my own creative license and just kind of eyeballing it. If I think a darker line will look good there, then I put it there. Now, on the very, very tips of this mane, it's mostly that soft vanilla ink, but occasionally I do come in with that E25 and I kind of add a little bit of a flick there so it kind of makes it a little bit more darker by the time I'm done with this this mane totally it looks like the guy had his fur rubbed the wrong way but it's fine I like the way it turned out I think it's fun and this is really good practice for super simple Copic coloring. If you need to practice on like flicking motions or following the lines of something else, this would be really, really good practice for you. And it's super forgiving. So that's the other really fun thing about it. And you could stamp out a bunch of these and practice on them. You could even do uh, different colors. You could totally make this guy look like any color scheme you would like and it would be awesome. All right, so now I'm bringing in that E23 and I'm just going to extend those lines uh, out a little bit further than what I had with the E25. Now at this point, I've kind of decided that he's not quite as dark as I want him to be. E25, E23 are pretty close. There's a little bit of difference in color in them, but not a whole lot. So I want him to read a little bit darker, but I'm going to finish up with this first before I do anything else. Now I had mapped out those shadows on his face with that E25. Now I'm bringing in the E23. I'm going over the top of that and I'm extending them out just a wee bit more. Now this is a tiny little area overall. So I am still trying to be pretty careful, but I need to start blending those out so his, his face starts to smooth out a little bit more, but you can still see all those details in them. Again, I'm bringing the E23 out to those tips and kind of darkening the, those up a little bit. I don't want it to be so bright or light around the edge of his mane. I don't care about a light source. I suppose if you wanted to make him look like he had a light coming from behind him, you could leave those tips a lot lighter. I didn't, and I don't care that he has a light source. That's totally not the purpose of this. So now I'm going to bring in back in that E29 and I'm going to make those uh, ends just a wee bit darker yet, but I'm not adding as much of this as I did with the E25 and E23. I just need to bring them out a little bit further and you're going to see the difference it makes from that right side to the left side. I'm just kind of working my way around his mane. I actually wish I had extended his mane just a little bit more past that bow, but it's fine. It looks just fine in the end, no big deal. So I'm gonna move around here and then I'm gonna go in with my lightest color and start blending this out and calling it good. It, he really doesn't take a whole lot of work, folks. That is part of the reason why this was so much fun. And again, you could stand out a bunch of these and you could, uh, color up a bunch of these. These would also make really cool magnets. I was actually thinking about that when I was coloring this in. That You could uh, cut down your card panels. You could stamp a bunch of these. You could make some magnets out of them with the different sentiments from the stamp set and they would make really great gifts. I think that'd be a lot of fun. 
All right, so now that I have that E29 done and I'm gonna call it good, I do wanna add just a little bit more shadow in his face, in around his little chin there. Honestly, I think my most favorite part of this whole line is his little chin. I don't even know why. I just think he has a great, he has a great chin. All right, so now I'm bringing in my E21 and I'm gonna blend this out. Now, the E21 is fine. It's a part of this blending group, so it's fine, however, I wish I had gone with something a little bit lighter yet, uh, maybe blended out that E25, the E23 with that E21 a little bit, and then came in with something lighter yet, like the E50, and I do kind of knock back some of that E21 with the E50 or the E51. But I kind of wish I had done that to begin with, added a little bit more light around his or highlights around his face, but it's fine. It all works out in the end, so no worries. So this is the E21 around his mane, and I'm literally going over the top of everything and blending that out. And I flick out that E21 quite a bit more past of what I did. Again, I want to make him look really furry and look like there's a lot of movement going on in this guy's mane. I googled some images for lions before I did this, and they almost look fuzzy. Like they're, they're definitely not groomed animals to be sure. So I was kind of thinking about that as I colored this out. So I'm going to finish blending his mane out here and then I'm going to take a second and uh, take a good look at him and see what else I need to do. See where, what other direction I'm going to go with this. I decided I needed to do a little bit more with his face. So those lines were still a little too stark for my taste. So I'm bringing back in with going back in with that E23 and this time I am going to blend those lines out or take those lines out just a little bit further. I had given myself plenty of white space plenty of highlight there so I can afford to bring those out a little bit further and I'm going to come back in with this E21 but I'm going to start right over the top of that E23 and I'm making sure that I push out away from that E23 with the E21 and kind of build up that E21 quite a bit. Look at the bridge of his nose there. You can see where I had really built up that E21 so it looks a little bit darker compared to the original E21 and that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. I want it to look like there's a lot of blending there. There's a lot of different color variation there. That's really where your color blending looks the best, I think, and especially on a detailed face like this. So those light, those tips were looking at just a wee bit light here. So I'm coming in with that E25, just a little bit more, adding a little bit more detail. You could really go on and on and on with this guy, but I think you don't need to just a little bit more and we're going to call it good. Okay. So now I have a dark brown tri plus fine liner pen and I'm going to add in the detail around his nose with this. It almost looks black here on the video in real life. It is actually a dark brown. So I'm going to add that in with that. I didn't want to risk going in with my Cobix. I was afraid that those lines would get too fat and it would ruin my image altogether. So these fine, fine liner pins actually work out great for that kind of detail. I'm also going around his face a little bit to give him a little bit more definition. I did his eyes. I will do his whiskers with this and then I'm going to call those good. I don't show you here in the video, but I do end up going over his mane with a lot of Nuvo Aqua Shimmer pin. You could totally skip that, but I wanted to add just a little bit of shine. I did try to keep it to as much highlight in that mane as I possibly could. I didn't want to, I didn't want his mane to look 100% sparkly, but I wanted to add a little bit more to that. I also use a Secura Clear Glaze pin. I go over those little spots on the whiskers and then at the, uh, the center of his eye peepers and call it good with that. So now I'm going to work on his bow here and I love this green combination and I especially love this green with the card base that I'm going to use and we'll talk about that card base here more than in a minute. This is my go-to green combination. It's, I started with the G29, mapped out those shadows. Now I have a G17. I'll bring in a G14 and a G12. I actually don't use a whole lot of that G12. I want this bow to have just enough highlight but it needs to read just a little bit darker because he's got a darker mane. So that's kind of what I was thinking on that. 
Now I'm coming in with that G14. You could definitely do this bow in a colored pencil. You could Copic color your lion and then finish this bow off with colored pencil. You'd probably get more detail, but I liked these greens. So, and I wasn't too terribly concerned about detail. As long as it still reads as a bow, that's fine. I have a green triplus fine liner pen and I'm just uh, going over the edges to kind of give it a little bit more definition along the bottom there. I kind of lost some of that in my Copic coloring but it's fine. That worked out really great. Here's where I bring in that G14 and make it just a wee bit darker. These bows would be so much fun in different colors. If you stamped out a bunch of these lines and then did them all in different colored bows with their crowns, that would be fabulous. Okay, so he is pretty much done. Now I'm going to work on my card base here. This is a Hero Arts folded card. This is from the Sunshine Mix. I believe this color is Mandarin. I'm gonna be using the Tribal Stripes background stamp on this with Hero Arts Pumpkin Pie ink. This color combination with this, the image on this bold print background stamp just makes me so happy. I don't know what it is. I just, I'm in love with it. So anyway, I'm inking up my stamp really good. I'm gonna line this up on my surface here so it's nice and square, put my card panel over the top of it, and then I'm gonna to go to town making sure that I have a really good impression on the front of my card panel or my card base here because a, I don't want to start it over, and B, I'm not entirely certain how much of it is going to be covered up yet. So I want to make sure that my impression is nice and good. Now this does dry back a little bit over time and it will lighten up a little bit, but it's still between the pumpkin pie and that mandarin color, it still looks awesome. I decided that I want to mat my little lion here with the Cup of Joe ink since it complements the coloring in it and the sentiment. I thought that I would ink blend it and I left this in here to kind of show you the difference. Ink blending is always, always, always lighter, folks. I thought that I would do the ink blending on that, realized it was going to be way too light and way too time consuming to do that. So I decided to go direct to paper with that cup of joe and again that will dry back and lighten up over time as well. Now I want to pop my lion panel up here on some fun foam. I have some double sided adhesive. I'm going to just use up some scraps. It doesn't need to be perfect folks as long as it's got even dimension and as long as it pretty much takes up almost the whole back of the panel for a good amount of support. Uh, it doesn't matter what they look like. Nobody's going to ever see it. So I'm going to use up some of those scraps, pop that up. Now I adhered it to my card base. I did stamp the sentiment from the Hero Arts Mini Everyday Messages on the inside with Cup of Joe. I don't know if you can see it, but I kind of smeared it. I wasn't paying attention. I'm going to have to fix that later. But for the purposes of this video, it is done. It is good to go. Do be sure to head over to a blog name hero to see all of the inspiration we have for you this month for the blog name hero birthday cards challenge. As always, we love it when you participate. There are prizes available and we just totally enjoy seeing what you guys have to share with us. And we certainly enjoy sharing our projects with you. I have more details and links down below as well as over on my blog if you're interested in those. I hope you enjoyed my card today. If you did hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all future notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.